Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guy. Today, I'm very excited because I have Dr. Madison Brightwell here today, and she's going to discuss how she helps people recover from toxic and abusive relationships. So Dr. Brightwell, thank you so much for coming, and why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Stacey. So yes, um, I ha- I'm a therapist. I have been a therapist since 2006. And I actually started off as a hypnotherapist. And the reason that's important or interesting is that that really looks at the what the subconscious mind is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you might not even realize, or your listeners might not realize, the subconscious mind is 88% of the mind, which is kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? Yes, so it is. You've got more than four-fifths of the mind that's below the level of your conscious awareness. So no wonder we are all of us kind of run by that subconscious mind. And that's the bit that kind of uh, can sabotage us without us realizing it. So um, I started this Facebook group about two or three months ago, and it was based on the new coaching program that I'm developing. And the Facebook group is called Breaking the Cycle of Toxic and Narcissistic Relationships. Um, with the emphasis on breaking the cycle. Right. Because what I recognized was uh, a lot of people, a lot of the clients that I was seeing as a therapist were coming to me with this very same issue kind of over and over, right? Where they say, oh gosh, I'm I'm in this relationship with this toxic partner, this abusive partner, um, you know, and, and uh, A, it's hard for me to get out of the relationship or it's causing me a lot of pain. And yet I'm feeling like it's really hard for me to, to leave. Uh, but also B, you know, this isn't the first time, right? Yes. But, you know, maybe I had another abusive relationship with another person very similar. So yeah. I start to recognize this is a pattern. This mm-hmm. is a cycle that repeats And that's the main thing to recognize. It's not necessarily about the abusive partner. In fact, they might not even be abusive. You might be with somebody who's not necessarily a bad person. It's just not the right fit for you. Right. And yet, use that over and over. You make this choice over and over. Um, You know, the interesting thing was when I, (laughs) I started realizing about six months ago, I wanted to put together this new coaching program. Um, which would be, um, I, I, I like to call it sort of turbocharged therapy because mm-hmm. you're, you're, um, you're kind of uh, you're working on many different things at once, perhaps, or you're, you're just really developing a relationship with the person and, and it's gradual and it's over time, okay? Right. Um, whereas with this coaching program, it's a 12-week program and it's very intensely focused on this one issue which is how can I break this cycle? Right. Um, So when I started thinking about putting this together, this coaching program, I realized that, oh gosh, back in 2012, so we're talking 10 years ago now, Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten all about it, but I was interviewed by the Huffington Post um, on how to stop choosing the wrong guy over and over. (laughs) Right. So, um, and I, I had recognized at that time that within me, I was making those mistakes. Right. Of course, a lot of times we talk about as therapists, as coaches, we talk about the things we've been through, don't we? Yes. How I got through that. So mm-hmm. I recognized that for many years, I had been sort of choosing the same wrong guy over right. and over. <laughs> and again, you know, it wasn't necessarily that I was always with abusive guys or even narcissists, sometimes, but sometimes not. So basically, but I was choosing the wrong guy. And it was always the same wrong guy. Right. Um, and so once I recognized that within myself, I became aware of it, I became aware of the red flags. Um, and in that interview with the Huffington Post, I said, oh, uh, I was very proud of myself because I had very recently been involved with a guy where I had been able to be wide awake to what was going on and to be able to say no this right. time no I'm not going to do that so that was really interesting for me to remember that I'd done that interview all that time ago um and now 
I've developed this coaching program, which is to help people with that specific issue. And as I say, it's very focused. You know, it's on that one specific thing. So I think we can achieve a whole lot in 12 weeks. Also, um, while there is a component of it that's individual coaching, there's also a component of it that's group coaching. And I do think that's very valuable because. Oh, I, yes, definitely. There's a lot of value in groups that people don't even realize that they that being able to hear somebody else say, oh, boy, I went through that myself. Is so helpful and yes. giving you perspective. Um, so that's basically what it is. As I said, it's starting as a, a coaching program, which will last 12 weeks. And also um, the fun thing is I'm putting together the written material that goes along with every week of coaching. And um, I'm realizing this is going to make a great book. <laughs> it will, definitely. Do you, yeah. do you feel that sometimes people fall into toxic relationships or abusive relationships because of the lack of self-worth they have of themselves? Because sometimes yeah. people have like a low self-esteem and they don't think they're worthy of anything better, or they might even, you know, find that they're actually, you know, they come from a dysfunctional family because 70% of the United States and worldwide are come from dysfunctional families. And we tend to fall into that environment and we don't know any better. We think it's normal. Absolutely. Well, as I actually outline in my program, there are several different reasons why we might be drawn into a toxic abusive relationship. It could be, as you say, that we feel like that's all we are worthy of, right? This broken person is all I'm worthy of because I'm so broken myself. Right. Or um, also... There is uh, there's the aspect where someone might feel like um, I'm the savior, I'm the rescuer, I have to save this person. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was me. I'm, I'm a rescuer, right? So <laughs> no wonder I became a therapist. So um, I would choose these broken people so that I could put them back together again. Well, the problem with that is, A, you can't put anyone back together again because it's up to them to do that. Exactly. Um, and B, I was destroying myself in the process. Mm -hmm. And it was not a healthy, equal relationship. It was always very one-sided. Yes. So, um, as I say, it's not necessarily always that you're with a toxic person, but you're certainly with a person who's not able to form a healthy relationship with you. Right. So um, so it might be that you feel you, you are not worth it. It might be that you feel you have to rescue them. It might be that you feel... I am so broken and damaged. Who could ever understand me? But another person who's also broken and damaged in the same way I am, you know. Um, and all these things, of course, are happening subconsciously. Yes. Go into it and saying, oh, I'm going to choose a broken, toxic person. No, I mean, it, it just happens without us realizing it. And then, of course, there is also the very strong, in fact, I would say in almost 100%, almost 100 percent of cases, it's based on our primary caregiver relationships, yeah. mom, dad, or whoever brought us up, you know? So because that first relationship is so important, it's yes. what teaches us what a relationship is, what love is. Um, so of course, naturally, even if it's a very dysfunctional relationship, we're going to be drawn to repeating it. Yes. It feels familiar. Um and and the one thing about the subconscious mind is hates change. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. It's and very true. It, yeah. So there's all these different aspects. And um, so what my, my program does is, is sort of, you know, it's got that overarching theme of how do I break the cycle? And then within that, we find out what is specifically going on with this particular person. Why are they choosing the same person over and over? Who is that person that they're choosing that's wrong for them? And by the way, this is men and women. Yes. Women, are, you know, men suffer just as much. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it's it's really, it's fascinating work. And I, I've been a therapist since 2006, and I've uh, worked a lot with um, addiction, chronic pain and trauma, which, by the way, also do factor into this. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, what I discovered within myself is I loved working with relationships. Right. <laughs> it's just really fun. Working yeah. with relationships is always fun. Um, so that's why I decided to develop the program. And I also felt like there's a big need for it. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people get stuck in this idea that, oh, it's just about this person that I'm with. Mm-hmm. And once I am able to either fix them or get away from them, I'll be fine. And that's that's a red herring. It's not about that. It's about what choices am I making? Right. You know, um, so that's why I call my group Breaking the Cycle. Now, people, people tend to sometimes fear change. And even though they're unhappy in a relationship, they're so fearful of change because they don't know what to expect, that they don't make any any change and they don't try to better themselves because of the fear of change, not knowing what to expect. So true. And it's and it's sad, you know, but I, I you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, you know. I can I can help to guide somebody who wants to change. Yeah. Ready to change, but I cannot force them. And and again, you know, if someone isn't ready to make that move, you know, they can't, they won't. You know, they'll right. they'll say, well, this is very painful, but I don't want the pain of changing. And yeah. It's a bit like addiction, you know, when they talk about hitting rock bottom. Yes. Uh, that you have to be experiencing very intense pain sometimes in order to mm-hmm. galvanize you to take some action. Right. Because, yeah is so great of doing something unfamiliar. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes, unfortunately. But yes, I mean, um, I can't force anyone to change, but if they're at that level where they're just like, oh, this, this, I'm done, I'm done. I have to do something different. Yes. To work, I, I, I need that help. If they're at that stage, then I can definitely help them. Um, yeah, a lot of people, though, would rather just kind of stay there in the victimhood of, uh, yeah. this sucks, but I'm going to st- stick with it because I don't yeah. know anything. You I know. see that all the time. Now, like, for step one, like, what would you, if someone knows they're in a toxic or abusive relationship and they do want change, what would be the first thing that you do with them to help them on their way to progression, to positive progression? Yes, that's a great question. Well, I, I will answer that by telling you about a lady I worked with recently. Um, when she came to me, I don't think she even realized what was going on completely. She was having these very intense physical symptoms. She was having basically panic attacks. Mm. Very intense. She hadn't really had them that before. You know, she went to the doctor. The doctor gave her Xanax probably or something like that. Right. So, um, but she was still having panic attacks. So that's why she came to me. She didn't know that there was a problem. But, you know, what can I do about these panic attacks? Yes. Very quickly, we realized that her relationship with her husband of 25 years was very toxic. Mm. Um, he was very abusive. He was the only man she'd ever known. Oh, mm-hmm. married him at the age of seventeen, when she had no idea, you know, who even she was at that time. Right. Um. So it, it was a um, pretty intense case, I would say, one of the more intense ones I've worked with. So what we both, but first had to do was identify what was the problem. Mm-hmm. Um. Very, very often, the person who is coming to me, either about a symptom or even about the relationship, but very, very often, they believe that they are the problem, that there's something wrong with me. Right. Um, It's very common, actually, with people who've been abused, even, you know, in childhood, to take it themselves, to take responsibility for it. So it must be me. There must be something wrong with me. Mm hmm. So the very first thing I had to do with this lady was to start giving her um, kind of like a sense of who she was. Right. Um, helping her start to define herself again, because that's mm-hmm. another thing. An abusive, toxic partner will very often control you by defining you. 
And right. Like, oh, you don't like that. Oh, you're not capable of that. Uh, you can't do that, right? So they do a lot of this. Uh, it's gaslighting, obviously, yeah. um, defining you. And so we had to unpack that, and 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 we had to help her. To, I had to help her to reclaim herself. Mm-hmm. And this is a lady who I discovered gradually is really strong. You know, she's in her mid forties, right? And she's highly intelligent. And um, but, but she she has this inner strength that has enabled her to survive really intense trauma from right. both her childhood and this guy that she was with for so long. And so the first thing we had to do is to help her reclaim those those aspects of herself, that strength, that courage, that wisdom, <laughs> all of those things to reclaim them, to realize they were part of her and to help her kind of disconnect from the toxic husband so it's like right. separating what we call it individuating in psycho bubble <laughs> <laughs> you know, to realize no this is me and that's him right the one that doesn't like this that can't do that because that's another thing they do a lot of projection you know they mm-hmm. they project onto you their own weaknesses and faults and um you know um so that was the first thing it's almost like to 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 shore her up to give her that strength that courage um and so once we had managed to do that then she was strong enough to recognize who she was and to be able to push back on him and his gaslighting now that was very hard yes very hard that's why i say i think she's amazing and uh, really strong because she did she did it she pushed back um she uh, now she's actually she's left him and she's um got her own place and her and a job and all that and she, she's done amazingly well in i think it's about a year we've been working together right um but she's literally recreated her whole life that's wonderful and it's it's really it's inspiring um and you know what's wonderful about that is she she had really no advantages at all she came from a terribly dysfunctional home Mm -hmm. um and you know her whole life really had been about trauma and yet somehow she had the strength to be able to do that to uh, to recreate herself so um yeah working with people like that really inspires me that it's possible you're giving them a second chance at life again you know yeah well, that's what she said to me, you know. Um, but she did the work. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I want to, I want to, re- you know, to um, to remind people that she did the work. I enabled her to. I I kind of uh, showed her the light, and then she kind of went to it, as it were. If you want to use a metaphor. <laughs> Now, do you, um, we talk about the uh, subconscious and have how 44% of your your um, thinking is from your subconscious. So do you actually work with them and try to get them to you know, connect with those repressed emotions that sometimes when you have so many emotions that are repressed throughout a dysfunctional life, you don't even know how you feel anymore. You, you're kind of numb. Yes, yes. Um, you know, the great thing is with all my work with addiction, because I worked a lot with addiction when I first yes. became a therapist, this really is um is very much a part of this. It's so it 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 really dovetails into all this uh, a lot of times because people get addicted to they get addicted to a certain type of love experience, they get addicted even to an emotion. Mm-hmm. And so um you know, uh, bearing all that in mind, yes, people very often use, um, if you want to talk about people being numb from emotions, people very often use a substance such as alcohol or drugs to numb themselves yeah. from emotions that are too painful right. to be able to experience. Um, so um, a lot of times it's helping them to recognize just slowly, gradually, gently, that emotions don't need to be avoided. We right. all have them. 
all they are is, is basically information. They're just messages, mm -hmm. right? So we don't need to numb from emotions. We can accept them. We can experience them. I mean, yeah, this lady that came to me with the panic attacks, she um, had a real, you know, turbulent series of emotions, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of emotions that she had suppressed because it wasn't even safe for her to feel them for all those right. years started to bubble up. And so, but she was able to kind of, we, we call it in uh, DBT, like surfing the wave of emotions, like surfing her yes. emotions. Mm -hmm. They're like waves. And, you know, as long as you recognize emotions can't kill you, they don't kill you. They're just there. <laughs> right. It's learn how to cope with them. Learn how to manage them. Just be with it, ride that wave, sadness, anger, distress, fear, just ride the wave. It's not going to last. Yes. You know? um, so there's a lot that I can do with people through talk therapy, but there's also a lot I can do um, and they can do with hypnosis techniques or um, EMDR, which is a trauma modality. Um so, yeah, I think being able to recognize what you're feeling mm -hmm. and um, allow yourself to feel um, and ride those waves of emotion, that's that's a skill that you can learn. Right. Yeah. Um, For people who, who don't yeah. know, I'm sorry. For people who don't know what... Um, you know, emotional modality is, um, you know, can you explain that to, to the audience exactly what type of therapy that is? Oh, yes. Um, EMDR, it stands for eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Um, and it's an actual system that helps people kind of reclaim traumatic memories in such a way that they can process it and therefore it doesn't haunt them. Gotcha. Much, right? With the maybe flashbacks, nightmares, or whatever's going on. So EMDR is a trauma modality, and I will use it with people who have uh, PTSD, mm -hmm. kind of um, um, chronic or complex trauma. Um, it's probably not something I would include in the coaching program uh, because it's it's going at a very much deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's something we could certainly touch on um, and recognize that by doing that deep work, we can we can uh, get to those deeper levels with the person. Mm -hmm. Once they started the work on this this particular issue about relationships, um, as I say, this coaching program I think can take people from A to Z in terms of recognizing that cycle and being able to break it. Yes, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, preclude them to also doing some therapy as well or, or some deeper therapy later to work on maybe some other issues they have you know does that make sense right yeah because you don't want them to repeat the behavior once they get out of the you know toxic you know uh relationship you know you want to make them feel worthy of themselves and have a self you know high self-esteem of themselves so they mm -hmm. they look for another partner that is you know uh, equal to them or above them so they don't go into that pitfall again what i i call it um working on the relationship with yourself mm -hmm. kind of falling in love with yourself which is so important before they can fall in love with another person mm -hmm. so, uh, i think it's very valuable to have some time between relationships if you've come out of a toxic relationship don't go right back into another one right you know it's not going to work that mm -hmm. whole thing, the rebound, you'll end up making the same mistakes if you right. haven't processed what just happened. Okay, so work on relationship with you, which is about starting to realize you are all you need, all yourself. You know, right. uh, many years ago, I, I read this great book called uh, Don't Bet on the Prince. Mm -hmm. And I love the notions in that because it was about um, you fill yourself up. You, re you you realize you are all you need, all on your own. Then you meet another person who's also whole. So then those two whole people come together and yeah. that healthy relationship rather than having a hole that needs to be filled by this other person, you know. 
Right. Because that creates that neediness, you know, which it's it's not good. It becomes then um, when you need someone, um, that also leads to more of a, um, uh, you know, not, not being able to allow them the space to be themselves too. Right. So um, it's rather than having two damaged, hurt people coming together and trying to <laughs> show themselves up. Yeah whole people come together and being able to form a really great equal partnership so when you have an attack a toxic and abusive relationship is do you ever see the other partner trying to um be willing to change or usually that person is, is it doesn't really you know um see the um the faults in themselves and usually it is the person who who realizes that it's toxic backs away from the relationship and leaves yeah, that's usually what happens. Um, I'm not going to say there's no hope. I don't like to do that. And and also, um, I never tell anyone what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With that. I'm never going to say, oh, you need to leave that person. No, because it's up to them. It has to be their choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's pretty unusual to find the partner wants to change, but not completely I mean you know I, I would always say there's a possibility right maybe the partner really wants to and is prepared to you know let's be open to that let's give them the opportunity absolutely right. um doesn't happen very often but it could happen yeah. right and you know I'm not I'm not ever going to um uh, as a therapist I don't believe in giving advice yes <laughs> mm-hmm they have to come to the self-realization themselves. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because that then it really sticks. Right. Mm -hmm. They have said, if they say to themselves, I need to leave this, you know, this relationship, then it's going to stick because they're going to be like, well, I decided. Right. Whereas if you decide for them, then like, well, you made me do that. So Right. <laughs> Now the hip, hypnotic um, therapy, what does that accomplish? Like, how, Can you explain what exactly it is, the process and what people accomplish from it? Yeah, you know, I, when I went to hypnotherapy school, which as I say, I did before I became an MFT um, and I went for a, a whole year. So it was a very comprehensive course. Um, they taught us that, um, well, basically what, what uh, our teacher would say is, it's all hypnosis. And what he meant by that was, as soon as the person, your client, walks into the room, you are having an effect on them subtly, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, subconscious mind, but like kind of dropping these little seeds into the, the mind, okay? Right. So for example, if you were to say to the person, oh, I really believe that you can do this, you know, well, you've demonstrated to me that you're capable of this. Or, so you're you're saying, a, en encouraging positive suggestions to them. Mm -hmm. That is going to seep into the subconscious mind in the right. same way as when you were a little kid and, you're, and your mom said, oh, you're not very smart, are you? Or, uh, you know, right. oh, kind of you're too fat or whatever mm -hmm. those negative things got stuck as well so um so that's that's part of it so um i think the um the misconception about hypnotherapy um is that uh you know the person walks in and you stick them into a trance and then you start <laughs> making them do stuff yeah. you know mm -hmm. um, not like that at all and so I want to um, give people a, a, an accurate representation of what it is. Basically, what hypnotherapy, the difference with hypnotherapy and regular talk therapy is that with regular talk therapy, we're just talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And therapy, we're talking maybe 70% of the session. And then towards the end, I'll say, Let, OK, let's do a little hypnosis. And then it's like everything we've talked about in the session yes. has an idea of who the person is and what they need to work on and you know some specifics also things like the kind of language they use you know right so all of that is like uh forms the ingredients to my little recipe that i put together 
which is the hypnotic journey. Right. Uh, so we do that for about 10, 15 minutes. And, uh, and again, you know, it's not weird. It's really not. It's just like meditation or yes, those guided imagery things that you might do online. Um, but with the, the extra part of it being that it's specifically tailored to you and your specific needs and the, the way you talk to yourself. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like when you relax and you're able to connect with your inner self, you come to realizations that you don't really um, realize when you're just, you know, doing everything, you know, um, you know, day by day, what you're, you know, you know, I think it, it, it makes you connect with, you know, and kind of understand parts of yourself that you didn't even realize before. That's so true. And that's the value of allowing you to, um, we call it going to trance, but really it's just about being relaxed. Yeah. And, open. and uh, therefore, when you're in that state, you're more open. And so you can connect with your subconscious. So that's really all it's about. It's right. not about me controlling you. It's about me helping you control you. Right. Right. Um, I like to say I'm giving you the reins of your own subconscious mind so that you can make the changes you want to make that you may may find it's a bit difficult to do that right in the ordinary course of events um so yes you're absolutely right that um 88 percent it's a bit like an iceberg mm -hmm. beneath the water yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you're going into that um meditative state you might call it you're able to access that 88 percent and change it you know, in little small ways and uh, and that enables you to control all parts of your mind not just that 12 percent that's conscious when these people when you have clients that come in and start these therapies with you how long mm -hmm. does it usually I guess it depends on the person but when do you start seeing some changes some positive changes in the person when they begin to start this um, coaching process and, and these programs Gosh, it's so it's so hard to generalize about that. I mean, it all depends on the person, right? Yeah, and it depends on the issue. You know, I I used to do hypnosis for chronic pain, for example, and I literally had people who came in with pain nine out of ten on the scale and left with no pain. So you might say instant, right? You no, know, in that case, instant benefits. Or there have been times when I, I saw someone who had um, usually PTSD from a specific very traumatic event. Mm -hmm. um, and again, able to let go of that after one session of the right. India. So, you know, that's on that side of the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, as I say, my, my lady who was married to the guy for 25 years, I think she did amazingly well because she within six months had made huge shifts in her life right um you know to my mind she she worked very quickly because she'd been married to this guy for 25 years it's all she had known and yet she was able to completely turn her life around in six months right so but that took her being very courageous and very willing to change and also being at I guess her version of rock bottom you know she yes she needed to she was in such a lot of pain um and then you, you, you know sometimes with people it takes a long time because they're afraid to make those shifts and or they might do little little bits or they might be like oh well, I can't do that you know I have this other client I've worked with for a long time and she's just too afraid to actually make those changes yeah and so it's very much up to the person it's based on partly on the issue they present with partly on um their willingness to change and their courage in in actually just applying the things i'm talking about them um, i also had another client um an example of someone who shifted very quickly um, she recognized she was on this pattern where she chose the same guy over and over. And um, she had been through two very similar relationships and a bad breakup just before she came to see me. Um, and then within about three months of us working together, she did find somebody 
who was very nice and 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 she was able to form a healthy relationship with him and that was good to see yes um she didn't go right smack into it she learned everything from what you know what she had learned from those relationships that didn't work out she applied everything we talked about so she you no know, she worked very hard and she got the benefits from that so um I know this can happen relatively quickly, mm-hmm. but I, I believe my job is to point them in the right direction. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there you go. Right. So um, I can't do the traveling for them, but I can absolutely, you know, and if they're ready, they can, they can shift their life very quickly if they want to. Right. Do you find that your patients sometimes have a hard time letting go of the past? Because sometimes people hold on to the past and it's it's very hard for them to let go of it. Well, what you have to find out is what is it that they are um, subconsciously, you know, not ready to let go of? Or right. what's, the, what's the subconscious? We, we call it the secondary gain. It's just the mm-hmm. subconscious belief that there's a benefit in, in this. So, for example, people that want to lose weight and find that they can't there's very often some subconscious reason why they're holding on to that weight. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we can uncover that, we can help them to let go of the weight. Right. You've probably heard that sometimes people who've been, uh, you know, physically abused, Mm -hmm. raped or whatever, that that they hold on to the weight like a protective. Right. You know, I had this client who was, she was a beautiful young girl. She was 24. So she was about 100 pounds overweight. Mm-hmm. And she literally called it her fat suit. You know, she'd been raped multiple times. And she said, this oh, is wow. what I carry. Yeah. But she was able to lose that. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. She again, remarkable shift. Yeah. I think when people are ready, they can do amazing things. And it's it's wonderful to see that. So how many different therapies do you offer? Um, okay. Um, well, I, as I said, I'm developing this program, which is a very specific for this particular issue. Mm-hmm. And this is a 12 week program. It includes the written material and the um, weekly coaching sessions with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that ongoing support. So um, that is a, specifically about the toxic and abusive relationships. Um, other than that, I also do therapy for all sorts of things, mostly, um, as I say, addiction, pain, and trauma are my, my three key issues. Right. And that definitely plays into the whole toxic relationships thing, <laughs> you know, yeah. oddly enough, um, because it very often stems from what you've experienced as a child. You know? Yes. I find that a lot, it, it, it goes back into your childhood when people okay. have issues in their adult life. A lot of times, most of the time, it stems back from our childhood years. Yes, I'm afraid so. That's when it all gets planted, you know, and yeah. then you reap the results. <laughs> so do can people also do it on Zoom with you? Do they have to be local or? Absolutely. No, they can. In fact, I only work on Zoom. Oh, the- Okay. Yeah, ever since the pandemic, I I have um, been um, completely telehealth. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, I love it. It works really well, much better than I ever expected. And um, I like working from home. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's what I do. I live in Asheville, North Carolina, mm-hmm. but uh, I can work with people from all over. Um, okay. Actually in England right now, I'm just here for a couple of weeks visiting family but most of the time I'm uh, eastern t- um, time zone but uh, I work with people all over I work with people on the west coast all the time oh excellent now where mm-hmm. can people find you what is your website yeah yeah um do you want me to put in the chat my email address should I do that or should I just speak it out you could just speak it out and then I will I will mention it in the description so when people want to um, visit your website they can go into the description and they'll have all their information there but just so people know you can just verbally tell them pretty easy my um, my email address is info at 
drmadisonbrightwell.com. The doctor is DR, so drmadisonbrightwell.com. And my website is drmadisonbrightwell.com. So that's pretty easy. And then um, if you want to find me online, um, you can find me at Facebook. Um, and it's Madison Brightwell 77. Um, and if you go on there, you should be able to also find my group. I would certainly welcome people to join my group because I'm putting a lot of information in the group, like little videos and things. Um, so that group is toxic. No, sorry. Breaking the cycle of toxic and narcissistic relationships. I believe that's the whole title. Um, mm -hmm. But you can also find that if you just go to my Facebook profile um, or just shoot me an email and, uh, you know, get in touch with me that way. And that's excellent. And a lot of people suffer from um, narcissistic um, relationships too. And it really can be a very, you know, dramatizing um, experience when you're in a relationship with someone that's narcissistic. Absolutely. I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been great. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for, for, for providing all this good information. And we'd love to have you back on the show. And we could talk some more, maybe about the um, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder and some other issues like chronic pain. I think that would be a great topic. People will be yeah. very interested in learning how to actually um, help their chronic pain because so many people around the world suffer from it. But it's been a, a pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. You have a great day. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.